high-level conversation, or one which tends to be the more New Zealand way that we deal with issues as they arise, and then we step back and take a, take a, a look at things as things have developed. I mean, I look at my position as Minister of Treaty Negotiations, and many of the, the broad principles that I'm dealing with have developed in that way. But I, I, I hear what you're saying. Anyone else want to speak to that? Okay. Got to be considered a basic fundamental human right. And any regime that imagines kicking people off the internet for the intangible harm of file sharing is crazy, just plain crazy. And that the issue of copyright violation is not an important one, and we've got to find the right way to, to, to deal with the issue. Um, but the right way to deal with the issue is, in my view, to think about the way to structure copyright law differently, not to think about ways to take this, you know, you're already on the edge of the world. Do you realize that? You're already on the edge of the world. And, and it's like forcing people to move to Australia or something like that. <laughs> So, yeah, that's... Rick, do you think it is a human right in a society like ours, or a basic right, access to the internet? Uh, <coughs> yes, I do. Uh, I'm more interested in the discussion about what we mean when we say it's a human right. Uh, and thinking about, I see Joy standing there, uh, looking down my throat, which is somewhat disturbing um, for her. Um, <laughs> but I, I think, yeah. It needs definition because you start talking about rights and it does tend to get a lot of people's backs up. ISPs start thinking about, well, so we're not allowed to cut people off, is that right? So um, it's, it's a nuanced discussion and it needs to be thought through, I think. Okay. Ross? Yeah, I agree that, that we're using very loaded terms, first of all, right? And I don't know how any of us would define a human right. Um, if we talk about the right of individuals to communicate and get the information that they want, and be a part of a community in the world, I would, I would be much more comfortable talking about that as a human right. Um, well, it's the right to freedom of association and speech. Right, right. So if we if but defining been, it in those terms, but I'm much more comfortable, become, but I'm will, always uncomfortable with loaded But terms. will the net right. become so much a part of that in oh, a long world it, and that very, to deny it denies the right? And very quickly so. But it's not, can I just say, I, I don't think it's so unclear, right? Um, when we say it's a, a basic fundamental human right, what we're saying is the government can't have a role in blocking one's access to it unless there's some compelling reason for the government to be doing it. So, so I don't doubt that providers have the right to say, I don't want to deal with you anymore, you don't pay your bill. Um, um, but I do think that we've got to think very seriously about when the government's going to be in the position of saying, we're going to cut you off from the 21st century. Now, you know, there are crimes that might justify that, um, there are crimes that justify locking people up for 50 years, but I don't think that what we're talking about here is anywhere close to that crime, and I think that's the reason why it's just outrageous to be talking about cutting people off in the context of this three strikes provision. The, um, the Bill of Rights Act and international conventions to which New Zealand is a signatory provide for the freedom to impart and receive information. Um, it's part of the, the freedom of expression. And the way that I see it is that if you are talking about the internet uh, or access to the internet as a human right, it is within that context that the discussion must take place. And in that respect, I think that you see access to the internet as a means of facilitating the right to receive and impart information. So you're actually stepping a little bit higher up the, the right scale, uh, stepping out of access to the internet as a separate and distinct human right and looking at it as part, part and parcel of the overall facilitation of the right of freedom of expression and part of receive information. Would you suggest then that were we in the fullness of time to cut someone off on the internet, we'd be in breach of our international obligations? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, there are two answers to that. <laughs> the first answer is I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> the second answer is um, it would be an interesting argument to, uh, to, to determine, yeah. and possibly one for the future. Mm -hmm. Colin, you got your views on this? 
Yes. <laughs> so, um, I think it's unconscionable to cut off people's internet in, uh, in, 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 in today's age. Uh, I mean, I would agree with Professor Lessig. Uh, but I also would, would, there's a couple of other points. If you, the, the internet's a network, as we all know, if somebody else gets cut off, that reduces my ability to use a network because it's one less person for me to talk to. So there is collateral damage to use a horrible expression in cutting people off because you're actually making the network less useful for other people who might wish to uh, converse or deal with these people. Yeah. The other one is uh, this is sort of physical analogy. We would not block the road to somebody's house. Yep, but Auckland City Council is right now considering <laughs> restricting the flows of water to people who do not pay their water rates. So, and I can understand that in the case of failing to pay your bills, so that's fair enough. Okay, we're getting some of the questions. I'm sorry, we probably digressed a little bit.